So he, he's like, yeah, Megan, let's show him, Megan. Okay, Megan, now what do we do? Oh, we're going to do that now, Megan? Okay, Megan, what Megan wants, Megan gets. Hello, YouTubers. Welcome to my channel. Happy to be here with you today. So today we are looking at Chapter 10 of Lady C's book, Megan and Harry, The Real Story. I love the pictures that she's she's got highlighted in here. Um, these are a few of the pictures that you will find as you delve into the latter pa uh, latter chapters of the book. And just looking at all these pictures and and seeing all the celebrities showing up here and at the wedding. You just really, really understand the motive. You really see the pretentiousness of this lady. And it's once again, a wasted opportunity with her flawed character. And I think in chapter 10, Lady C is really highlighting some information that helped me to, to see Megan as the calculating person that she really is. And I say that because you look at the, the patterns of the money that she has come into and you see how she did things when she hardly had money. It was all about getting attention. And now that she's come into some money, she, you know, it's, it's elevated that getting attention because now she has the money and now she has more of the recognition from her marriage to Harry to really capitalize on that attention that she is so desperately seeking. And I can only imagine as an actor where you're constantly trying to find people to notice you amongst all the sea of women who are trying to make it into the entertainment industry. You are one of many millions of girls who are doing and looking pretty much exactly how you are. And what makes us different is who we are inside and what things we value and what things will we do, what things will we, we not do. And, and, and that's really what distinguishes you from the sea of all the other hopefuls in, in the industry. I find it so sad <laughs> that she is one of these girls that had all this opportunity waiting for her from this marriage. And she still seems like she's this actress in Hollywood trying to be recognized amongst the sea of all the other girls that are trying to pursue careers in Hollywood. And she hasn't grown. Her, her character has not evolved into the situation that she has married into. There's no evolution of better character. It seems to be a metamorphosis into a, a, a narcissism times 10 now that she's married into the royal family. Interesting dynamics, things that I found with this chapter in 10. A couple things I did not agree with on Lady C in this, and I'll talk about that as we get to it. So the first part, chapter 10 on 289, page 29, they are in LA, but we see the buildup to them trying to transition to LA via Canada into LA. And we, 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 know, we knew she was going to divert through Canada to LA. That's just, she ain't trying to fool anybody with that little maneuver. <laughs> we saw that coming. Okay, so here we go. So as far as the public were concerned, 2019 ended on a high note for Megan and Harry. They had announced that they were retreating from public view to spend six weeks away on a much needed break, which would be in keeping with their previous demands for privacy entirely private. They have calcula calculated their move at this point to say they wanted privacy. Now, as we can see now by the things that have happened, they haven't kept themselves private at all. The contrary, 
she thinks she's fooling people by saying she wants privacy and she needs to leave. Their interpretation of privacy seemed at odds with their endless postings on their stylish website. The rumblings were focused on more of their failure to, to be with Prince Philip than anything else because this is where they had the decision they were getting ready to close down the the flights they had to make a decision are you going to go to england you're going to retreat and go back from canada back to england or are you going to go from canada straight to california and at that moment of truth the decision was made to not go back to the uk to be with prince philip knowing that his health is failing Rather, it was to go to California to try to capitalize in on making their own money. And it all becomes about money constantly. And that is the choice they made. It goes into, it all seems suggested that Harry and Meghan's configuration made them seem to be less lost in their own trio of love. She thought that their positioning gave out the message that they were equals in contrast to the Cambridges' Christmas card, which is which was a more traditional with William at the center of it. And I didn't think about this at the time, but that is true. When you look at the Christmas card and you look at the messaging that they put out there, you can get ideas on the, how their how their marriage is functioning when you look at the Christmas card and you see that they're both equal on the floor with Archie in the front of the picture and you see Megan and Harry behind Archie with Megan's face not blurred but Harry's face is blurred and you almost have to wonder does Harry even know did he even realize did he look at the picture and go oh nice picture he didn't realize it and say, oh, I'm a little blurry. Can we use a different picture? We know that didn't happen because he's not aware consciously of these things. He doesn't see the, the undercut that Megan is doing in the simplest thing, such as such as taking this picture. It is obvious that Harry is not the center of their world in a sense of what she wants to portray. She's on equal ground and footing with Harry. Harry is getting sliced all up and he don't even see it. He's not conscious of it. And I think if he were conscious of it, he'd be like, OK, whatever you want, Megan. Well, Megan wants, Megan gets. And this is why we have to always look at the underlining message that Megan is telling when she puts out any kind of picture or when she puts out anything, there's always something else to draw from, from that. It's never on the surface what it appears to be. There's an underlining reason why. And you can tell just from that simple picture. Let's see here. Because Diana functioned at a time when the internet did not exist, she was handicapped in having to use the press to get her message across. Although Megan replicated Diana's practice of exploiting her links to sympathetic organs within the media, such as People Magazine, she had direct access to supporters via the web in a way Diana never had and was making skillful use of this access to mold her followers' opinion of her and Harry. What was interesting was how she possessed the same cocktail of traits that Diana had, charm and sincerity mixed with contrivance and opportunism. I don't see this comparison with Diana and Megan. This is where I do happen to disagree with Lady C. I think Diana did do the things that Lady C is saying about using the press. As she said, we didn't have the internet at the time, but Diana did it because this was her outlet for people to, to really see who she was. Because we know that the, the Royals were trying to paint her as being everything other than what she wanted people to see and who she was. And she had been hurt by a lot of things that had happened within her marriage. And so this was her way of speaking to the public and getting her message out, which I felt was sincere. It seemed she was being authentic, Diana. She may have used the press, yes, because she had to. She had to use them because she needed them to draw attention to the causes that she wanted. So she had to play this cat and mouse game with the, 
British press. They did it both. I can see how Lady C is saying this, but at the same time, the way Megan is doing it is vindictive. Diana wasn't vindictive in her pursuit in trying to manipulate the press. That's, I think, the difference that I'm trying to say. Okay, he's an innocent abroad and she's a great visionary who feels her way strategically towards her goal without actually being able to read a roadmap. A lot of their tactics are ad hoc, spur of the moment stuff. And I do agree with that. And this is why that decision to go to California rather than going back to be with Prince Philip because of COVID, was just a spur of the moment thing. Had they been strategic in their, their duties of being committed to helping the monarch and being committed to the missions of what royalty had called for, their decision would have been to go back and to serve and to help the people during that time, that transition. It was just like, okay. Let's go to California. Forget Prince Philip. We're going to go make our money. <laughs> what they do know, though, is that where they want to be, that is living an A-list billionaire lifestyle in California, fed it by film world as a great humanitarian and uh, humanitarians. This is their goal in life. So whenever you see anything that they are doing, it is Megan envisioning herself living as this this A-lister in California as a billionaire and making it look like I'm out to help the, those less fortunate and I'm going to use them to my advantage. The late princess of Wales would do anything to grab a column inches away from Charles and the other royals, sometimes even the queen, such as the time that she had started to play the piano as he was about to make a speech or when she wore a hairstyle while accompanying the queen to the state opening of parliament or when she posed in a pathetic solitude outside the Taj Mahal. Now, this is the other part where I don't quite agree with Lady C because the Taj Mahal photo that Princess Diana took, it, it spoke to people. People really felt like this was a, a building that was built for true love. And here she sits alone without true love. And I don't think that it was pathetic solitude. I think it was very sincere in the optics that it portrayed. Prince Charles was not Diana's true love. And there she sat in solitude, but it wasn't pathetic. It was in a sincere solitude. The reality was she did not have true love with Prince Charles. I think maybe she would have found it with Hasnat Khan I think he was a true love of hers. I do. And that picture to me was what it was. I mean, it's unfortunate that, okay, Lady C sees it that way. And, you know, that's okay. We're, we have our differences of opinion. And I think that's what makes what Lady C says so interesting because she can see things completely differently and it helps us to learn and to see Diana differently too. We don't want to be blinded by things. We want to have truth and we want to have insight into things that maybe someone else can give us. And I do value Lady C's insight because she has a perspective on things that I never would have had because she had the insider's view to a lot of things that Diana did. And I only had it from a fan point of view. So I didn't see it as clear as she did, but my personal opinion is where I speak from today. It certainly seemed that the spirit of Diana had returned to the body of Megan and that Harry had been too young to appreciate the nuances his mischief making mother had been, was only too eager to go along with the royalists regard as the unnecessary and potentially destructive competitiveness, which had crept into the Sussex's PR at the expense of other royal activities. In the past, there had been too many occasions on which he and Megan had snatched publicity away from other members of the family, usually by means of carefully calibrated postings. This was just the sort of conduct no one at the palace in the establishment or the royal family wanted. Yes, yeah, so we see that Megan has a pattern of knocking 
other royals out of newsworthy items because she is carefully planning every post that she does. She'll wait to use it at a time that is more convenient rather than posting it a day or two after she does something. She'll wait weeks, months to post it. And we know she's done it in the past. It is her pattern of doing things. This is why whenever Megan does decide to come out to be apologetic about anything that she may have done, which I doubt that she will even do, she needs to atone for the past postings and under, under, undercutting that she has done to the royal establishment. She is brought, she's been brought into a family in which she is supposed to be there to uplift it, but she seems to want to destroy it at every opportunity by taking away from what it is that they're speaking about. And this is a deliberate act. Despite this, critics wanted to know why Harry, Captain General of the Marines, had missed the memorial concert marking the 30th anniversary death of the uh, 11 Marines when the IRA had bombed the Royal uh, Marine Depot at Deal. Surely Megan could have attended the Lion premiere, King premiere on her own while he attended the memorial concert. This again struck a wrong note with people who genuinely wanted harmony and moreover wanted to see the royal family function as a dignified and unified unit. Each one in step with the other rather than one couple knocking another off of its perch. So we see that Megan once again used going to this royal event to make money and she needed Harry to break the ice and she needed Harry to be the pitch man to do something that she, she uh, quite frankly was too afraid to do herself. So she used Harry to get a job. He pimped her out. She let him pimp her out. However you want to say it, it is what it is and that is what happened. Um, the Daily Express royal correspondent Richard Palmer felt compelled to tweet, wow, what unfortunate timing that once again, just as a senior member of the royal family was heralding an important initiative, the Sussex Royal Instagram account kicked into life with some PR pictures at the very same moment. Megan once again stealing headlines. Um, Megan had instructed her American representatives to make her post popular, make her the most popular woman on earth with the largest Instagram following and bigger than Diana. They began nothing how Harry and Megan were using postings to trump his brother and Catherine. So Lady C is just really recapping things that we've been talking about, how Megan is always trying to <laughs> undercut other royals. She is trying to say, look, and it's me that needs to be talked about. And it's just a regurgitation of all the bad things that she has done that she continues to do to this day. Megan, however, had a far more American view of her position. Her goals belied her heritage, just as Catherine Cambridge's belied hers. Megan's target target audience was not and had never been the British people, but the American world of commerce and entertainment. Being a businesswoman, she understood only too well the monetary value a large Instagram following could have. The Kardashians are paid hundreds of thousands of dollars per posting, sometimes even millions, and her goal is to supplant them and derive all financial benefits they possess. So that brings me to when is Megan going to start up her Instagram? When is she going to do that? I know that at the time that this was being written, Megan and Harry had their own Sussex Royal Instagram account, but now that they are no longer able to go by Sussex Royal, they're trying to find their more independent way of doing things. And how are they going to do that? Well, we know that they're using the newspapers to get across their points, such as Megan putting in the New York Times, what had happened with her, her miscarriage. A lot of people don't believe that she miscarried. I'm starting to almost doubt myself just because of how she uses opportunities to bolster her own goals and her, her own goals are like what Lady C was saying to be an A-lister, billionaire, humanitarian living in California as an A-lister. So could Megan say she had a miscarriage 
or could she say that she had to abort a, a bad pregnancy and call it a miscarriage? Would she take that opportunity and write an op-ed about it to benefit herself in a positive way? Yes, she would. And that's where the self doubt of it being a real miscarriage comes from. Had that been the case, I think she would do that. So we see how Megan has used social media to dictate the narrative. She's constantly dictating when she was a part of the Sussex Royal brand running her Instagram account. She was constantly dictating this narrative with different agendas that she was trying to shape. They put on their Instagram account, account how we intend to step back as senior members of the Royal family and work to become financially independent while continuing to fully support Her Majesty the queen so we know this instagram post that they posted she went on about wanting to the queen the queen we want to help you queen but we still want to do us but we're going to keep you at arm's length your queen we we don't want you too close to what we're doing but we're going to still try to be a little close and the queen wasn't having it the queen saw right through it so they were using their their posts on their instagram to get that word across and they did yes. Wherever and whenever they appeared, Harry and Meghan held hands. Their overwhelming love and obvious affection for each other, evident as they acted out being the embodiment of true love. There should have been no doubt that theirs was a genuine love story. For their every movement and action projected how strongly they felt about each other. Sadly, however, the British press and too large a proportion of the British public seem unconvinced that they were anything but a conniving actress or her willing dupe. Megan's public displays of affection were not regarded as marks of sincerity, but methods of control, which only Harry could not see through. This was really good how Lady C says that, because isn't that what we all see? We don't see someone who's being loving and really being sincere in her affection for him. She conniving. That's what we see. We see her conniving. Clear as day. People are not duped like Harry is duped. That I can tell you. So the beginning part of chapter 10 is just kind of going through all the things that we had seen Megan doing and contriving her, her goal in life is to be a headliner and to have Harry be the person that helps to continue her on her plight to getting what it is that she wanted. Um, you know, showing that affection ain't really affection, but it's her controlling him and showing him that, you know, you want me to love you, don't you? You know, I love you. You know, I'm holding your hand. I'm touching you. You got to be feeling me like you got to do what I want because I'm giving you the love and attention that you need right now. So keep saying Megan gets what Megan wants and I will continue showing you this love and admiration in which you need to to thrive in this world that we're seeing ourselves go through in this place of time so keep doing what you're doing here because I'm going to keep fulfilling my duty to make you feel like you are loved even though we know that's not what it is so they had chosen social media to dictate what it is that they wanted to do, but then they could not use Sussex Royal any longer. And we know the queen took that away from them and they were wanting to sue over being able to use the word royal, but they weren't going to do it out of whatever reason, you know, just, just two little kids trying to do big grown up people stuff. And royalty is not the same as celebrity. This is something that I, that I have learned recently. I've always thought the Royals to be like celebrities, but no royalty is for the people. They're there to help the people. It's, it's not what, celebrities are and you're not to be there for the royals the royals are there for the people you are a prince or a duchess at all times not just when it suits you to be if you are engaged in commercial activities it's supposed to be on behalf of the institution or the monarchy uh, of the monarchy not on behalf of yourself such profits as accrue should never be for your own personal enrichment, but for the benefit of the nation. And so 
I don't think that Megan really wanted to see that as fact. She, she saw that and she was like, I don't care. I'm going to still try to get mine and make it look like I'm here for the nation. Knowing all the well it was going to be for her celebrity status, the recognition. Megan and Harry were deriving financial benefits from their charitable endeavors. The worry was that they might end up receiving expenses for their charity activities, which could be interpreted as backhands. And I think that is why they are looking to do something that is charity. So that like when Megan wanted to do the voiceover for Disney, it was not to benefit myself. It was to benefit the elephants. You can donate the money for me doing this voiceover for you to, you know, the foundation on behalf of the elephants. And perhaps you can give me something for my travels, you know, not as a payment, but a reimbursement for costs that she may have accrued while seeking to do the job. So there's these underhanded ways that she can try to make it look like she's doing it to benefit something, but really at the same time, she's using it to benefit herself. Mm -hmm. The courtiers are far more sophisticated than Megan and Harry and understand potential pitfalls insofar as they are detrimental to the monarchy in a way that neither of them does. Harry simply does not have the intellectual capacity and Megan for all of her canniness such as a newcomer to the big lead that she lacked the knowledge experience and insight that she could only acquire with time by making mistakes or through the wisdom of experienced advisors to the monarchy they lack essentially these important skills social skills to really help them navigate into the circumstances that they're in. Of course, the objective was to acquire much fame and fortune for themselves as they could with never a thought for the welfare of the monarchy or the interests of the British people. And this is so important because I think that is why they really have gone so sour with the British people because, you know, the British people are the ones who are really suffering the most from all of this backlash with Harry and Meghan because they're using their taxpayer dollars. Although they pay back the money for Frogmore, these are the people that have invested interest in this couple doing their royal duties. They are representing their nation, their, their, the institution. And the fact that they want to go off and do other things rather than serving as senior royals in the royal family, and really supporting the nonprofits and businesses that are local to the UK, they're not doing that. So I can really see how the British people are upset with that. But just like Lady C was saying, Megan's intention was never to have the British people become a fan of hers. Hers was all for commerce and entertainment. You know, how much money can I make globally? You, you know, going back to my roots, and getting popularity and it don't have to be the British people that like me. So she, she just lacked the skills that she needed. And so did Harry, cause we've seen him cut up throughout, throughout the years. They have no idea about their place in history in a way that is good. It's, it's all bad for them and how they see themselves in history in the Royal family. And they're, they're using it as a, as, um, um, a stepping stone to better things. And what's so unfortunate about all of it is Harry, he's, he's going along for the ride because he finally found a woman with the guts to do what he couldn't do without her. So he, he's like, yeah, Megan, let's show him Megan. Okay. Megan. Now what do we do? Oh, we're going to do that now, Megan. Okay. Megan, what Megan wants, Megan gets. So it's good for him because he don't have to think. He never had to think when he was a royal. He had the courtiers and his people doing everything for him. And now he's got Megan doing things for him. And it's so crazy. I was just listening to a podcast where I heard, I think it was Old Miss Scobie, um, where he was talking about Harriet showed up to this charity event and he didn't want anybody to know. And he just came in there for four hours doing the work. Now, look. Why are you even saying that on the podcast? I'm sure it was told to you to say that Harry went and did some charity work 
and he didn't want no one to know. But the fact that you're even mentioning it, this it defeats the whole purpose. Because we can see that it was Megan or Harry. They told you to say when you go to talk to people that Harry didn't want people to know that he was doing charity work. But he did want people to know he was doing charity work. He didn't want to have to be the one saying that they were doing the charity work. Essentially, Harry didn't or Megan. They wanted to just look like they were undercover. <laughs> we just going to do this. But oh man, we're going to have you mention it. So it looked like... We just doing this charity work, but you gonna put it out there in the ether so people can really know that we doing it. Cause we know they got, they have to have people see them because doing the deeds of goodness is no good unless people can see you doing it. They don't have what it takes to support the greater good and interest of the people, of the charities, of the monarch, of what all the work that Queen Elizabeth has put into the monarchy, all the wrongs that they're trying to make right now within the institution. They're not going to be a part of that. They're a part of it in the most extreme negative way possible. So their place in history and all of this should always come out to be on the side of not very useful to anything that the British monarchy has been able to accomplish. Because at every step and way, they've been trying to take it down. Intent on getting their point of view across to their supporters and the American public, Harry and Meghan got friends to complain that those who were standing in their way were simply naysayers who were spiteful because they wanted independence and these spiteful opposers didn't want them to have it. To drive the point home that Harry and Meghan were uh, benevolent and uh, loyal to the opposing forces who were so nastily obstructing them. These friends then assured the world that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex would nevertheless do as the palace desired. They wanted to look like they were doing the work of the palace by having friends say that they were there to do the work. But the illusion of looking like we doing the right thing is what they were trying to portray. Not the reality. They're always trying to portray an illusion of what you're looking at because they're not sincere. Everything about what they were doing, everything about what they were doing was to really jeopardize the monarchy. And with the things that Prince Andrew has done, with the coming you know, turnover of the monarchy from Queen Elizabeth to Prince Charles and it being Prince Charles. And then we've got Meghan and Harry. The, the, the monarchy is in jeopardy. It is in jeopardy. And there are things that are going to be, there are going to be things that are going to be happening once the queen passes an uproar of an abolishment of the monarchy. That's what I feel because of all these things that are building up to why even have a monarchy. Like I said from before, Prince Charles had a duty to be king and to live his life in an upstanding way. He did not have the luxury of marrying the love of his life. He was in a situation where he married Diana. He should have upheld his marriage to Diana been good to her and told Camilla goodbye you the, the 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 duties of my my role are more important than the feelings that I have for you and their whole affair everything about them if he couldn't have an affair without Diana stepping in the way trying to like cause issues he should have just let it go because he had a bigger role to fulfill and I think Charles was always going to feel very let down by the fact of what he has done. And because of that, they should like step right over him to Prince William. He don't deserve to be the king, Prince Charles, because he chose love. Edward VIII, just like him. So he couldn't be with the woman he loved and be king. And so Charles is just going right back to you, although you were able to marry your love because of how you came about marrying your love by stepping on the toes of my Diana and causing her much pain and agony for that reason alone, for what you did to Diana, you should not be allowed to reign as king. And you should be okay with that because of what you did. 
it should be okay. I don't think he'll, I don't think people will take well to Camilla once they, they have her in the spot where they can say, wait a minute, that was supposed to be Princess Diana where the Camilla is right now. Like people are going to start remembering. They're going to be like, oh no, yeah, what you did, Camilla, what you did. And it's going to all get conjured back up again. And it's just not going to be good for the monarchy. So they just need to stop and just step over Prince Charles and say, hello, Prince William, you going to be the new king because they are the embodiment of what it should look like. And Charles need to be OK with that. That's what I say. I am informed William was particularly disappointed by his brother's attitude. He felt that all they all have responsibilities which go above and beyond their own personal desires or even their own happiness. Thank you, Lady C. That is exactly right. So that speaks especially to what I just said about Prince Charles and Harry. You guys have bigger roles to fulfill. And this is how I see it. If you feel like you need to still have your cake and eat it too, like I'm born into the royal family and they say, I can't marry so-and-so. I got to marry so-and-so. Then if I'm willing to take the money, the accolades that come with being in this family, then I need to abide by what they say. Now, if I say, well, I quit you. I don't want to be in the royal family. I'm going to go do me. I'm going to marry the woman I love. If they wanted to do that, fine. But you can't have your foot one step into the royal family and go act a fool and think people are supposed to be accepting of you while you act a fool and take government money. That just that don't go together. You can't act a fool and, be, and, and, and get what you want at the same time. People will tolerate you getting what you want in terms of the finances and the accolades and all that. But you better abide and do right by the people. So because Prince Charles didn't do right by Diana and that whole debacle of a marriage and because Prince Harry then married a skank and brought her into this sacred place and given her powers essentially that she doesn't deserve to have, he should have to outstep too and be like, no, he don't get nothing either. Go make your own money. You should have to get nothing from the royal family, from the people. Go be for real, for real alone in this world like me and you out there watching me, how we alone in the world to fend for ourselves. We ain't got somebody saying, OK, I got you. I got you what you need. You need a couple thousand dollars in your account for a day or two to go do what you want. Like we don't have that, but they do. So the fact that they even have that means, OK, then you can't just go abide by your own rules. You got to abide by the rules of this establishment that is giving you what you want. There is a price to be paid. And most people that I see like Harry and Charles don't want to pay the price. You want to will what you willed and have the money and have the people following you. And you still want to have the love of your life too. And don't go like that. This is, that is not the real world. And we know that when myself and others have to go through situations in life, we going to have to pay our price. The people that are the most wealthiest and privileged seem to always bypass the normalities of life, the things that life gives you to teach you. And, and, and this is why I think they, there needs some, to be some accountability for you being able to have the love of your life, you know, and the, and the tone should be set for that. Get out on your own and just go, let's see, what can you do now? What you going to do? But you ain't going to come right in here on, on the backs of all the work that we've done as Royals and not abide by our rules. That's not how it works. I get it. And I'm willing to pay the price. Hey, what you want me to do, royal family? What you want me to do? I will do it. Now, that's if I were to do that, I would follow the rules because I'm getting something in exchange. See, there's a certain lack of common sense in basic life terms 
that some people of privilege just don't get. They, they don't get it. They don't understand. This is not how the real people in the world function. So let's go on. What else is Lady C saying? Yeah, and just like when, you know, there was this whole debacle about them even leaving at the beginning of the year. They didn't even tell the royal family they were leaving. That alone should have been reason enough to just strip them of their titles. How they even approached this whole thing. This was a complete disrespect to the queen and to the monarchy and to the people. How they went about this. There has to be a price to be paid. And what do I call it? I call it a smackdown. They need one. And why are people so hesitant to give that? This is how you learn the most. When you feel the burn, when you feel the repercussions, then that's when you start to really learning starts to happen. And you start to go, oh, that pain, that didn't feel good. So. I'm inclined to now learn from my bad behavior because I didn't like the way that felt. But if you're constantly stroked and made to feel good, even when you know you should be punished, you're never learning. You are constantly doing the wrong thing and your, your decisions become worse and worse and worse. And you're constantly making bad choice after bad choice because you've never had the consequences of your behavior. The burn needs to happen for Harry and Meghan. The titles need to be stripped come March because of how they have behaved. And I'm almost certain that the British people will support that. Although a limited number of public figures in Britain, such as actress Helen Mirren and the writer Hilary Mantel, Mantel understood a star's need to shine brightly. This was not shared nationally. The general view was that Harry and Meghan were not only abandoning the British royal family and the British people, but they had shown disrespect by issuing their departure statement without giving a advance notice to any member of the royal family or the courtiers. This fact was confirmed by Buckingham Palace, which informed the BBC royal correspondent Johnny Diamond that it was a disappointment by their decision that the royal family was hurt by this announcement and that no members of the royal family were even consulted. The level of disrespect and entitlement is so off the charts that the people should demand that they be stripped because of this behavior. Harry is Charles' son. William's brother, the queen's grandson, they all love him, right? They were all fully aware that Harry would have been perfectly happy to remain as a working member of the royal family, okay? Involved with his charities and maintaining his military links. Had he not married a woman who wanted to capitalize upon the royal status, and strike out on her own with him. The words financial independence inspired terror at the palace for all the reasons previously articulated. No one who loved Harry believed the desire for financial independence lay with him. We know it ain't Harry trying to be financially independent from anything. Harry was just doing Harry. He may not have liked it all the time. He may have been like, man, I wish I could have been number one instead of number two. But he had his Invictus Games. He had his charities. He had the things that he was doing. He had the military. He was in his country. He was doing him. So he would have been fine continuing on that path. I love what, as Princess Margaret's former lady in waiting, Lady Glenn Connor put it, Maggie didn't want to stay very long because she didn't realize that to be a royal is jolly hard work and quite boring at times. It's not all fun and glamour. A lot of it is behind scenes, so it's not supposed to be flashy. Megan, oh goodness, this is the girl is a fraud. Fraud, can we say the word fraud? Uh, Megan can found herself as an equal to the queen. You got some nerve, lady. It's like the, it's the audacity of it all. Uh, you know how military people respect the chain of command as a royal. He knows that the grandson of the sovereign does not have 
parity with the sovereign. The realism that Megan is such a strong character and is self-confident that she regards herself of equal of any other living individual, irrespective of who they are or what their position is. And that that she feels sufficiently empowered by her self-belief that she that she will take on anyone, including the queen and regard herself as fully entitled to negotiate with anyone that, 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 that says it off that, that right there says it all that really brought it into perspective for me hearing that because I never looked at it like that. Of course you can look at it as being disrespectful, but you take it another step further when you say that she thinks she's on equal playing ground as the queen, like what makes you think that? What kind of brain malfunction do you have to have to think that you are on an equal setting with the queen? I find that just laughable. Like I just go look at you and laugh because you really got some issues if you think you're on equal par with the queen. A another part where I wasn't quite on the same par because she talked about on page 317 about the ministers of propaganda and she talks about um, Hitler's brilliant minister of propaganda Joseph Goebbels and Diana Princess of Wales. I don't think Princess of Wales was I mean I, I didn't see the similarity in comparison to that. Megan wants to constantly control the narrative. Um, this struck the British media as yet more hypocritical can and every journalist I spoke to believe that their policy will always be to control access so tightly and to impart information so guardedly that the only picture the public will ever see is a heavy curated one. And that's, that's very on par lady C right there because you're looking at a couple who is currently having issues with the British media. They're, have a lawsuit pending now because of their messaging. Megan felt like it was wrong. She felt like, or she feels like she needs to control what anyone says about her because she knows she's not a real person and she needs people to see how she's painted the picture, not how you see the picture, but how she wants you to see the picture. I love the contrast that Lady C did between Wallace and Megan. There's really good ways uh, that similarities that you see. Uh, Lady C has pointed those out very nicely. Um, the contrast between the two is really good. It's page uh, 329. I, I won't go over that now, but I thought she did a really good job at that. Uh, Wallace loved her husband and wanted to remain Mrs. Ernest Simpson while being the king's mistress. Rather than losing a fortune to marry a man for love the way Wallace did, Megan has ensured the acquisition of wealth through a series of dexterous maneuvers, some commercial, others personal, but all with the businesswoman's eyes firmly fixed on the baseline. Wallace's idea of hell was the life she ended up with, saddled in in perennial exile with the man child whom she and Ernest used to call Peter Pan <laughs> condemned to a lifetime to have him worship at her altar. Megan, on the other hand, has encouraged Harry to embark upon a life of semi exile and seems very comfortable with the pedestal he has put her upon. That is a really good analogy of things. Um, for all of the differences, Megan and Wallace have one or two uh, differing features in common. And then Lady C goes on to mention all of those. Page 332, midway down. Um, you know, Harry has made possible his stepping back from royal way of life. She has not only failed to appreciate the tremendous sacrifices he has made for her, but she hasn't even listened to what he has said. Harry stated in front of hundreds of people at the Chelsea Ivy, how saddened he was to give up his links with the military and indeed his country, family and friends. Can she truly believe that she has liberated him from bonds, which were not shackles, but valuable moorings to a past life, which for all 
imperfections? Can she genuinely accept that there was no sacrifice in substituting a splendid position laden with possibilities for doing good for one with full of uncertainty? And I can only imagine that Harry can see now that he has given up more than he ever thought he would have to give up by marrying Megan. It's, it's a dynamic that we are seeing happen in real time, that that's why I continually say that the train is just getting faster. It hasn't come to an halt, it hasn't crashed. Because in this very moment that we are living right now, we are seeing Harry living a life of uncertainty. And his wife and he are now trying to find this way about themselves that they haven't even figured out but they knew at least Megan knew that it wasn't a part of the royal family it wasn't a part of being a senior royal that she knew with certainty but for all intents and purposes for Harry this was the only certainty for life that was going to give him the security that he needed considering his unstableness mentally and to have to regurgitate the feelings and the time when he lost his mother for the sake of earning a living, that is going to be really hard and traumatizing for him. Now, it could go the other way where it helps liberate him to be able to talk about it more. I don't know, but the, the, the chance that it could go b both ways, either way, is something, do you really want to take that gamble when you don't have to? When we know that they had their life that was full of meaning and very much similar to what they're doing and replicating now in California with the charities. Megan's not working. She's not able to work and earn a living outside of the Royal family in a way that she had envisioned now that she's in California because of COVID. Maybe she's making things move and getting things going now that she is there. I'm just, I just see a lot of things coming that are not going to help one with their marriage, help with their, the upbringing of their child who is not going to be growing up around his, his cousins. He is taken out of an environment in which he will thrive being better off in a Royal family rather than isolated with no family in California. So I think there's a lot of mental things and issues that are going to plague Harry as they continue in like Lady sees this uncertainty and it is full of uncertainty at this point, especially with COVID. We as people don't even know the future of what we're going to be going through because of this pandemic that we're living in, right? So this couple just left out on their venture in 2020 at the beginning of the year into the abyss of the unknown. And they're going into their uncertainty of financial freedom from the Royal family as we are all walking in uncertainty right now with COVID. It just is compounded with more problems and issues that I see coming for yes. them. This is really great from Lady C. So the greatest mark of success is that you leave things better off than you have found them. In this balance between your own importance and your relative unimportance, your replaceability and your unique irreplaceability, which gives the holders of great positions the sense of proportion nece necessary to fulfill their destinies. The king is dead. Long live the new king. So, <laughs> you know, any path that Megan goes down, she has left destruction in her way. We know that. And that will be the same for professionally and personally for her. My opinion, because of the patterns that we see. And I base everything that I say on patterns, unless you can see a change, unless you can see, like I said in my last video, where she is able to say, she's been part of the problem or how can she say that she can do better having recognized her past mistakes if she's not able to do that how can she get better how can they change to me it just shows that they're going to continue on the same path because she's still not even acknowledging the issues that she has made that have compounded the problems that she sees in her life and the life of her husband there's 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 issues still going on around them 
But has she tried in any way to be repentive or to, to backtrack and say, let me try again and let me look closer at some of the past choices that I've made to see how I can be better? Because unless you see her do that, you don't see her continuing to grow in whatever the, even with the write up that she had in the New York Times and the op-ed, she hasn't really recognized her own shortcomings. She hasn't really looked at herself as being part of the problem. And until she is able to do that, how can she even grow to be a person that has actually acknowledged a better future is to come because of the hardships of and the recognition of my mistakes that I'm willing to recognize. You don't see growth. You see a consistent pattern of doing the same thing in destruction, destruction, climbing that ladder, getting what's mine, got to make that money and at any means necessary. So until there's a change with how she is walking in her walk, it's all going to still be the same. That's how I see it. Lady C goes on to also talk about the elevated position that they are in the queen. She talks about really well. And it's like the queen did differently when she saw her place in history. She was able to recognize, okay, this is a huge responsibility. I'm going to have to really step into some big shoes to fulfill the duties in which I am going to, to walk in. Right. I don't think that Megan sees the, sh the big shoes that she's been putting on. She's got on big girl britches that she just can't feel. She's not able to fulfill them. And, S and Lady C talks about that page 339. I really like how she did that. Um, going back to page 338 in the world where Megan originated into which she was able to return. Many people consider it admirable to be as aggressive as Harry and Megan are with what they did with Disney and CEO. It's this hustle, it's this constant drive to make it, make it, make it. But if she just stopped to see, look, you made it, you did it. Stop hustling, stop throwing people over the bridge. Stop trying to do all these things that you were doing before you made it and recognize you are in a position where you were able to, to do a lot of wonderful things that most people will never get to do, but she hasn't realized it. And because she can't see it, she's going to keep making mistakes and she's in that actor mentality. And I know that all too well, because when you go to LA to be an actor, you're taught this hustle and you're taught to try to get in front of the right people and to do certain things that are going to get you to where you are trying to go. And that's to get that big breakout role or to meet that one person that's going to help give you an opportunity. And it seems like Megan just keeps going for that. She keeps fueling for that, that she left as an actor. And now she's back with a prince on her arm and just keep going after what she was going after before she met the prince. But now she's got this asset she says on her arm and he's going to continue helping her get what she's been trying to get. It, it, it's, it's a cycle and mentality that I don't think she even understands that she's on this wheel that she, it's time to get off of it. It's time to get off the money, old money, new money, all lace lady C breaks it down so well. When you look at how old money behaves and how Megan, before she was a no money kind of person who came into, um, new money, but she's still middle class in comparison to the money that she has come into with the old money, meaning the Royals. But she is still in that mentality of no money. She doesn't, that's why those two years that she spent the most money on Royal dresses is because she still had the mentality of somebody who just had come into no money or had no money still. Although she had moved up into the middle class when she had gotten on that show suits, she just doesn't see how she is in a situation that she's not even behaving right with the establishment of the old money that she's found herself in. And I love how Lady C breaks that down on page 344. Really good. Um, to all intent, intents and purposes prior to her marriage to Harry, Megan would have been categorized as a no money person. While she had made reasonable money following her success in suits, she did not have enough to even buy or furnish a decent sized house such as she and Trevor used to rent and maintain a reasonable lifestyle, which is 
the acid test between new money and no money. <laughs> she really was Cinderella at the ball. This provides a partial explanation as to why she regards financial independence as being so important. It must be remembered that Megan's success came late in life. She has only enjoyed it for the last few years. So I love how Lady C goes in and breaks this down that, you know, Megan really still is in a low class position um, and how it's 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 this mindset that she hasn't grown into the establishment of the money that she has found herself in now. And that's also going to be a detriment because she places money above everything. It's the hustle of the money constantly and not seeing that the worth and value of the old money that she had as a royal was going to sustain her. And she's got to essentially start all over with making this new money. And she's after that in a hustle that is also part of the downfall that they're going to find themselves in unless they find that new money in a way that she needs to sustain her. It's, it's a cycle that and a mindset that she can't see that she's in. And it's really broken down really well. Lady C, this is a really good chapter. I really find a lot of value in this because I've learned a lot about things as well from seeing how Lady C laid out that no money, new money, old money um, scenario. Megan's heightened appreciation of all things material and superior affected the way people reacted to her. They recoiled from her overt materialism and demeanor, which she might have thought was classy, but which they regarded as pretentious. She just couldn't walk in that walk of, of old money. And she came off, like Lady C was saying, very pretentious with all that money she spent on clothes the last two years. She 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 is constantly, I think, shooting herself in the foot rather than just stepping back and learning and being quiet and still and understanding the brevity of the situation in which you are in. She's making mistake after mistake after mistake. And unless she starts to listen to her advisors with this new PR firm, like with this article with her and this miscarriage, mm, not sure it was a good move because a lot of people can, that can see through how she has been playing the Royals in this game, they can see through that, that PR stunt and they can see that whether she had the miscarriage or not, it should have never been publicized considering how she's wanted to have herself portrayed as a private person. She still looks hypocritical. She still looks as if she is a user and an abuser of circumstances. You know, had you had that miscarriage, are you really going to write about it in a, a very flowery way in a paper? Is it going to come off like that? Are you going to connect it with politics and the issues of racism that we find ourselves in? Like that is such a personal thing. And to try to make sense of it in today's world with all these other issues, you're just bringing on things and issues that that you can't possibly bear these burdens. But yet you want to carry them to sustain or to create a lifestyle you're trying to fuel in this uncertainty, as Lady C says. So it's, it's only walking you down a path of, of trouble with the people who can see through it and know that you are not walking in sincerity. You are being very superficial and pretentious, whether it's the old money or the new money. And her, her authenticness is not coming through the way she thinks it is because she's got those sicko fans or people that are going to give her those accolades when she does certain things to make her believe this false narrative. Um, but I just wanted to give you guys that recap of chapter 10 of Lady C's book, Megan and Harry, the real story, hoping to get chapter 11 out much sooner, but there was so much breaking news and I will be watching the next season of the crown. Well, actually chapter uh, 
four, five, and six of season four of The Crown. Catch that. And remember, if you want to join my membership page, I am giving updates on a lot of things that I have been doing with my time living abroad and as an actor. I've gotten a few gigs lately that I've been speaking about. So I hope that you guys continue to join me in my journey. If you haven't joined my channel, please hit that subscribe button. And until next time, you guys, peace and love. I love you all. Bye-bye.